Good afternoon, my name is Kent Clifton. I'm Business Development Manager for Cat Resources Industry in the Mining Division. Let's take a journey to the technology. And back in the day, that old 980 built in 1988, we don't know how many hours are on that machine. The 769C, they call that old Smokey. It was built in 1981. These machines were both sent brand new to the proving grounds up in Litchfield. So those machines were used to develop the property. Once they got done developing the property, these were test machines. So we talk about technology, and again, back in the day, this was Caterpillar's introduction into mining machines. So you look how small these machines are today. That old 769 back in the day was probably rated at about 50, 55 ton. Back in the day, these were world-class machines with a lot of advancements in technology. That bucket has a hydraulic kick out, which was just fantastic and such an advancement and such a nice feature for the operators. That 769 had power assist steering, didn't have air conditioning, but back in the day, that was technology. So as we go through this demo, think back as to what we started with and where we started at in this company to see where we end up at the end of the demo. So when we talk about mining, the first thing that you must get right is drilling. If you miss the drill depth, if you miss the pattern, if you miss the, the mixture in your blast and you get a poor blast, it's going to cost you more to get that material out of the ground. It's going to be harder on your loader or your digging tools. This is extremely critical. Five different drills in our lineup, they're all rotary drills. They are 100% Caterpillar drills today. So every piece that you say hanging on that drill is a Caterpillar component. That drill is loaded with technology, and we're going to get into that just a little bit later. The top of the cab, you see the green light flashing? You see the mass on the rear with the receiver? That drill has command for drilling. The green light is telling us that there's an operator sitting in that seat. If we were to walk up to that machine and there was a blue light on, we would know that it's being run remotely from a different location. 5 inch to 16 inch bit options, single pass to 11 meter, multi pass to 47 and a half meter. And you can see the carousel on there right on the very front of the mast. That carousel is actually holding your additional stems. 30 degree to minus 15 degree drilling angle. We have the option of tricone bits. This is down the hole drill. So that means that the hammering action is actually happen happening underground. We also do a lot of testing with that machine. And we were actually doing a lot of this testing right up on the hill to test some of the bits for our product group. We have improved service and reliability on that drill to give us that exceptional uptime and reliability and allowing us to get the high required utilization hours out of it. So let's shift gears and let's go in and talk about our construction industry models. We think about mines, we think about large mining trucks, big shovels, big wheel loaders. We definitely cannot afford to pull them out of production to do support work. All of these machines, can be a very low cost investment in your mining operation. And you have to understand the value that they can bring. Right down in front of us, an MD322D wheeled excavator, just filling in a wash that we had at the bottom of the slope. We can pull that little trailer with us. A lot of different options available. That's got a ditch cleaning bucket on it. You can put four stabilizers. You can put two stabilizers and the little support uh, blade that you have on the front. Right in front of us, the 259D3 compact track loader, 299D down cleaning up the floor. Again, nine different models ranging up to 110 horsepower. And as I'm talking about these, I want you to be thinking about what would I hang on that machine if I had it. Straight across the bench in our loader lineup, our loader lineup consists of the 903 all the way to the 994, ranging up to about 1,740 horse. Putting in a pipe coming out of our underground mine portal to try and get some of that water out of there is the 440. 11 different models in the lineup. Some of those models include IT. Up on the slope, 315, one of our smaller excavators. 
We look at our excavator lineup, 94 different models of excavators today, material handlers, front shovels, and the wheeled one, as you saw, just leave the floor. So let's look across the bench, brand new D9. So you're gonna see some brand new dozers today, and these are in our new dozer lineup. So that lineup starts with the D9, the D10, and the D11, which are considered mining machines. Again, that D9 is brand new, a brand new platform on that tractor. The D11 that you see setting by the drill is also that same platform. So as far as consistency across the line for operator comfort, options, features, and benefits, it is a very consistent message. So D9, track type tractor, we think about track type tractors with Caterpillar and we are still a tractor company. D1 through the D11, ranging from 75 to 850 horse. Push 621s and 631s with the 9 or the 10. Then if you want to push 651s, you'll start looking at the D10 or the D11. It's got a 22-yard blade, multi-shank ripper. When we look at the platform of that tractor, 3% lower cost per yard, 4% lower cost in M&R, or maintenance and repair, 5% less fuel burn, and that also has an optional 360 camera so that that operator knows exactly what's around that tractor. It's literally a top-down view. So he's pushing through a brand new 631K. That's an open bowl scraper. So we make open bowl scrapers and we make elevating scrapers. We also make an open bowl twin engine scraper in a push-pull or a non-push-pull configuration. So there's three different single engine models, the 621, the 31, and the 51. That scraper has grade control and load assist. So we look at reducing operator fatigue. To do that, we try and put as many controls at the hand of that operator and literally in one hand so he can run numerous functions. We see this working well in mining infrastructure development. They work a lot on drag line pads, overburden removal, haul road maintenance reclamation, working with drills and working in with drills and really working uh, alongside our drag lines. 8% more productivity and a 21% larger cab. So that cab is going to be the same cab that you're going to see on the other machines as they come across. So again, that assist feature that he has on that, he knows exactly where his fill needs to be. So he sets his bowl height, runs his ejector forward after he opens up his apron and spreads that material out. He has his cushion hitch on, which is gonna make it an extremely comfortable ride for that operator. That seat is also tilted just a little bit, or he's turned a little bit, which allows him to easily see into the bowl. 825. Two models in our, in our four-wheel sheep foot compacted configuration compactors, the 815 and the 825. 65 Chevron feet on that to give us excellent compaction. There's also cleaner bars on there so that you can get full depth compaction with those wheels. We'll come back and talk to him in a minute, but look over to the far right side. That's a pair of 637s. So we make 627s, 637s, and 657s. Just like the single engine scraper, but with two engines. So as what these guys are doing right now, they're doing what's called push-pull. These guys have to be very much in sync, work well together. That front scraper operator has that bowl stuck in the ground. And as soon as his bowl fills up, he will lift the bowl out of the ground and the second operator will lower his bowl, open his apron right where the first one stopped. They'll lock up their differentials at this point, they have 1,700 horsepower to that cutting edge. As soon as the rear scraper is loaded, he will lift the bale up, which you can see on this front scraper. He's going to lift up that bale. He'll kick out the tractor cab. So the other operator sees he's pulled out. He knows he's free. They'll activate the cushion hitch, and they'll take off. Look how comfortably they look in the cab. And you'll see that cushion hitch or that shock action between that tractor and scraper bowl. We can also put cat grade control on these. So again, they know when they're cutting, they don't take too much. They know when they get down to grade, they stop and they move over into their next slot. When they bring this material in, they know exactly where it needs to be laid. They know exactly what depth it needs to be laid at. 
about 12% more productivity with a pair of 637s today with the advancements that we've put on this. And again, at the end of the day, at the end of an 8, 10, 12 hour shift, those operators are much less fatigued than they would have been running a scraper 15 or 20 years ago. The compactors back in there, again, we start looking at haul roads and mining applications. A couple things to remember. Good haul road base, compact the material and compact it to an engineer design so water can't penetrate it. Make sure that the water can shed off the road at about a 2% cross slope. Put it into a ditch and get rid of it. You do that, you're going to be able to hold the haul road together even in some of the harshest conditions around the world. That 825, you can see the receiver on top of the cab. He has a program in there that is telling him that he has had complete coverage over the area that he's working in to make sure that he ch achieves the required compaction that he's been, he's been tasked to achieve. 140 down in front of us, that's a 140 lever machine. Looks very much like our old G&H series. That operator is literally pulling the levers like you used to do on a motor grader and it's got a steering wheel in it. That one's somewhat loaded up, 14 foot mole boards, got the push block on the front, which I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. Also has the ripper on the rear. That ripper again is really for support activities in your mining operation. Now let's look at that 623. That front end is just like the 621. Same cab as you saw on the other scrapers, has a cushion hitch. It's the only elevating scraper in our lineup. 7% more elevating torque to pick that material up and allow you to achieve that great bowl fill factor and improve chain life. So we think about in a mine site, how would we call this mud away that we just pulled out of the ditch? Typically you'd bring in a wheel loader and a truck and I might have to make two or three runs with the truck to get rid of it. Low cost capital investment for this scraper. You pick up that mud, you go waste it off to a waste site. And again, I'm not gonna interrupt truck traffic or anything. Also has cat grade control. So today when we're doing the demo and if you see that receiver on any of these machines and it isn't a mining machine, it's typically got cat grade control. Let's look straight across the bench. 962 is in our medium wheel loader lineup. So we're gonna go ahead and screen a little bit of rock over there. That 962, we've made a lot of improvements to our mid-size wheel loaders. It's got improved fuel economy. Standard ride control. So as he's loading carrying material across that bench, those hoist cylinders now have become more or less shock absorbers. With that full load in the bucket, that's just gonna be a cushioned ride for him. So a lot less fatigue on the machine and a lot less fatigue on the operator. That machine has cap payload with production measure, so he knows exactly what the weight of the material is in the bucket. And if he made 500 runs to that screen throughout the day, that system is going to track that and know at the end of the day that he made 500 runs across that screen. So let's bring in some other machines. So we got that material screened out. We're going to bring in that 982 up on the top. 12% lower maintenance costs and a lot of the same features and benefits that we saw on the 962. Partially and fully automated loading, so depending on what the operator in that loader has selected, that machine can just about load the bucket himself. But by using that feature and taking, taking advantage of that opportunity and that technology, we're able to achieve greater bucket fills on that machine. So it's measuring wheel slip, it's measuring hoist power required and breakout force to achieve that full bucket fill factor. Also has cat payload system as an option. So if I wanna know exactly what I'm putting on those on highway trucks or this articulated truck, that can help me do that. 352 large excavator loading that 631. That's a variable gauge 352 with cat grade control. If I'm out setting the pipe or doing some finish work, that grade control is gonna put me right on grade every time. 45% increased operator efficiency with that machine, and it also has a payload system. So little unusual that we see an excavator loading a scraper, but I had a spare scraper today, and I was a little bit short on trucks. This is going to work. That 740 straight across from us, seven different models of articulated truck. The 730 and the 740 are the two models that we have with the ejector on it. Rated at 30 and 40 ton, 50% less operator inputs. So that operator has most of the controls again in one hand. He does not have to 
do a lot of interacting with this machine because the machine is smart enough that it knows the environment it's working in, it knows the task at hand, and it's going to do it itself. That 740, like all of our articulated trucks, are really designed for poor underfoot conditions, where that all-wheel drive and that oscillating axles, oscillating cab and articulating cab and bed really allow you the flexibility to go through some of the, some of the nastiest ground and some of the worst underfoot conditions. Combined ejector and transmission lever, and again, all-wheel drive, automatic retarder control, automatic traction control, and assisted eject. Now watch. We're going to spread some road rock. Typically, we bring in a big truckload, dump it out, bring in a dozer. He's ejecting that material. The faster he goes, the thinner the lift of material. The slower he goes, the thicker it's going to be. We can do the same with a 631. Take that deep cut cutting edge off of the bottom of that machine, put that cutting edge down within a couple inches of the road, and eject out that material. Right now, by the looks of that material, the only thing that I would need to do is bring in a motor grader and shake out a couple of those, those larger rocks in there. Come in and compact a little bit, but again, a couple of couple inches on the road, the trucks are gonna hammer that down just fine. Brand new, 374 up on top of the hill. So look up high to the left. 374 swinging 40 ton of pass. Two different boom options available for that machine. A reach and a mass X boom, and that mass X means mass excavator, which is really a short, short boom, short stick, which allows us to put on the biggest bucket that's available for that machine. Electrohydraulic controls, and across all of our products today, the day that we went to electrohydraulics just opened up a whole new world to what we could do with technology. You can put a quick coupler on that and use a variety of Caterpillar work tools like we talked before. And that long undercarriage on that machine, like most of them you see here, is going to give you an extremely stable platform. So when you start working with a reach machine with a long stick and the largest bucket that's configured for that, you start working out at full reach, and that long, wide platform with that wide pad is going to give you an extremely solid base to work from. That's 745, 45 ton machine, and again, 20% more interior space, just like we saw on that 745. They're really the same machine, little difference in capacity, and obviously you saw the difference in the bed. So, 140 lever machine. We saw him earlier on the floor. I'm going to talk about all of the motor graders, but while he goes by, pay attention to the cab. So he's sitting right up on top here next to us, going to pull that wind road down, all-wheel drive machine now. You think that that's a push block on the front, but that's actually a counterweight. That additional weight is going to give this front axle weight and help those front tires stick to the ground. Got his tandems locked in, he's got a ripper on the rear, fairly well loaded up. This is a 160 M3, same block on the front. All-wheel drive, 14-foot moldboard, rear ripper. That's the M series, so the operator has the controls right in his hand. That machine also has, has cat grade control. So again, if they needed to cut this side slope to a 6% slope, 5%, 10%, whatever it is, cat grade control is going to put it there the first time. So let's go down on the floor to the machines that we consider our mining machines, but don't ever exclude these smaller machines for the support work, for the secondary roads, for your employee roads coming in and out of your mining operations. That 18M on the floor is literally a fully loaded 16M. So if you had a 16M today, it would have a 16-foot moldboard. But if you put every option on that 16, weighted it up, a ripper, push block on the front, everything on it that you can, you would have an 18M except for the variable horsepower, which gives you increased horsepower in certain gears when blading heavy material. And then we have the 24M. So again, with VHP Plus in 4 through 8 gear, you're going to get about 530, 535 horsepower on that machine. 16M, 16 foot moldboard. 18M, 18 foot moldboard. 24M, 24 foot moldboard, but that one has a 28 foot moldboard as an option. Blade float and variable float are standard on those two machines. Ripper is an option on a 16, but it's standard on the 18 and the 24. And you can see that the 24 also has 
the optional fenders and operator access platform. So again, making it extremely safe and easy for the operator to get up and down off that machine. And that option is also available on the 16 and the 18. And if you look at the screen right here in front of me, this is our lineup and the only two machines that aren't available in North America is the 140 and the 160 uh, typical or traditional lever machine. Now, if you paid attention, the guy in the 18 isn't quite as experienced than the guy in the 24. He made a three point turn which caused some confusion for our trucks. That 24 motor grader takes 104 foot to turn around if it doesn't articulate. If he's working on a 90 foot haul road, which is typical for a 793, he's gonna be blocking up traffic. He was able to make an articulated turn because he's an experienced operator. He turned that 24 motor grader around in about 40 feet. Let's let the motor graders get out of here and let's look across the bench. Brand new 395. That machine's a monster. That is an ME configuration again, which means mass excavator. Short boom, short stick. Put that big eight and a half yard bucket on it. That 395 is a 207,000 pound machine with increased structural strength on the front. So that boom stick bucket have all had major improvements and structural improvements to them to just, to just uh, extend the life of those pieces. That's an eight and a half yard bucket. That machine is 10% more productivity, 20% lower maintenance costs, and 20% more interior space. So again, that cab design is starting to go across our product line. Four times quieter cab than the previous model. That machine also has power smart eco power modes. So as what that means is when this operator is really pounding out the truck loads and just really working, working that digger hard, that machine is gonna stay at full throttle, it's gonna be flowing all the oil and he's gonna have all the power that he needs. When he starts scratching around in the dirt and needs to just do a little bit of cleanup, maybe brushing up his edge or something like that, it's gonna slowly start reducing that engine speed. As he reduces that engine speed, that's gonna start saving him some fuel. We don't need to be burning all of this fuel for support type activities. It has a boom and stick regen. So when he's going back and turning back into his dig, as that boom's going down and the stick cylinder is actually going back out, we're capturing that oil flow, putting it back in through the pumps, into the pump drive, which is reducing the load on the engine. Removable counterweight, three different pad options, three different boom options, the ME, the GP, and the reach, and six different stick options. That machine's also available with cat grade control and 3D on that machine is an option and it has 360 view. So he can see everybody that's around him and that's what makes it safe for him to load that 773 on the same level. That 773, seven different models ranging from the 770 to the 777 and that is our off-highway truck product lineup. Rated at 52 ton, carrying about 41 yards of material. So now we switch over. The next machine that we have in the lineup from the 395 shifts us over into the mining products. That's a brand new 6015. So that is the new model after what you saw a few years ago released was the 6015B. 10.7 yard bucket, swing in 16 metric ton of pass. You can see the lineup here on the screen. We have a versatility class, which is the 6015 and the 6020. And then our productivity class of the 6030, 6040, and the 6060. 15% greater productivity out of this 6015 compared to the previous B model. And doing that, we're still hitting an increase in production but we have a reduction in fuel burn of about 20%, which today is huge. Triple PC hydraulic pumps, one pass advantage over the previous B. Not many options on this. Two stick options, several bucket options, and the optional uh, operator access ladder that you can see right there. He just got done loading that 775. They've been around a long time. Again, part of our off-highway truck offering. It can either come with a flat floor, or you can get it with a dual slope design. TPMS is also an option, which is truck payload measurement system. And that truck is rated at about 72 tons, 72 and a half ton. So let's talk about the Caterpillar lineup of our mining shovels. The versatility class, 6015 and the 6020. 
Those machines are only available in a backhoe configuration. Then we look at the 6030, the 6040, and the 6060. Those machines are available in a front shovel or a backhoe configuration. They're also available in either electric or diesel drive. So this machine is diesel, has two diesel engines, and if we lost one of those engines, we can still perform at about 65% output. It also comes with electric. So if it was an electric drive machine, there would be a pigtail going in the back of that machine. In place of the diesel engines would be two electric motors. Those electric motors would power the pump drive, which would power the pump. Everything else on that machine remains the same. So we have five different backhoe models, three different front shovel models, capacities of eight yards to 44 yards. That 6040 really likes a match up with this 769. And I'm going to talk about this 769 in a little bit. And there's definitely some history to this truck. That 6040 front shovel swinging 40 metric ton of pass. So in Imperial, we're pretty happy at about 45. So 45, 90, 180, that's what this truck was rated at when it came out new. 407 ton uh, total operating weight. Again, remember it's available in a front shovel or a backhoe. That machine is available, some of our front shovels are available with operator assist. So as what that does is if the operator gets distracted or you have a new operator, there's a tendency that when you get to the end of your stick out stroke, your boom up stroke, or your bucket curl stroke where it hits the stops, if you're not paying attention without the operator assist on, it's, an, it's a very, very hard hit on the end of those cylinders. That hit puts a lot of stresses through the machine. It also puts a lot of stresses and jolts on the operator. With operator assist turned on, when it gets to the end of that travel portion of that cycle, it's actually going to snub or slow down that oil flow so that you don't get that hard hit. And again, it makes a big difference in the life of that machine and also in the comfort for the operator. That machine's also available with Product Link. And we're going to talk a little more about the health of our products. But that Product Link actually gives us the ability to monitor the systems on that shovel as, as it's operating so that we're sure when we start seeing failures, we're able to catch them in time. I much rather have a known failure coming that I can control when I do the repair than an unexpected failure. So again, we can increase reliability, we can improve utilization if we monitor that and make sure that we catch it in time. That's an old 769, again, rated at 180 to 190 ton. So the current truck today is a 789D with a 200 ton capacity, and that's actually gonna be increasing a little bit with some of the improvements we're making on that truck. Okay, let's get back into some CI products again. So again, we look at how do we support our mining operations today. You're gonna to see about every tractor in our lineup, but let's talk about these. Brand new D3, 170 horse, just doing a little bit of cleanup work, putting a safety berm up, so when you go out to look at the machines, nobody falls off into the hole. Up to 50% more efficient and a lot of technology advances on that machine. The D6 XE straight across from us, that's an LGP machine, but it's an XE. So that XE means it's an electric drive. Same thing, diesel engine powering that generator, going back to your wheel stations and your drive and putting the power to the ground. We got rid of the converter and we got rid of the transmission. 35% more fuel efficient with the XE version of that. 12% lower maintenance costs. That machine is an LGP, which means we have the big wide pads on it that gives us increased flotation. Variable power angle tilt blade, the ripper, a winch, the counterweight, those are all options that can be put on that machine. As you see, there's nothing hanging on the back. Now, if we look over here on the slope, we've got three more tractors. We have a D6 with a lockup clutch. That lockup clutch is going to give you additional torque, additional pushing power when you get under a load. That machine as well, and you're looking at it and say, well, that's funny. They don't have any technology on that machine. 
We do. It's got integrated grade control. So that machine has grade control built right into it from the factory. Is all you have to do is put a radio in it and you're ready to go. And it's receiving the signal that it's required and you can actually see it up on the back on the top of the cab or the receivers. The tractor next to it, a D7E, we're not gonna talk a whole lot about that one because that one is soon to be phased out. But that was our entry into the electric drive tractor in our tractor lineup today. We learned a lot with that tractor while we had it out in the field and still a popular tractor today. The DAT, what do you notice on the DAT? It's got terrain. And what's the green light mean? That means that we have command for dozing on that tractor. The green light means it's being operated manned. If it went to blue, that tells me that there's somebody at a remote location running that tractor. The receivers on the top of that tractor tells me that it has terrain on it. So we're gonna talk a bit more about terrain later, but is what that's doing is just like cat grade control, but terrain is in the mining, is in the mining side. It's my cut fill gauge. It tells me where I need to take material according to the plan that was sent to me and where I need the fill. That DAT in the configuration that it is today from the previous model is 18% more material move per hour. Again, you see the command for dozing option on it. You can get an LGP option on that machine. And that blade also has an insert in it which is designed to save the face of that blade when you're pushing scrapers. That is also the largest tractor in our lineup that we can have as an LGP configuration, which is the low ground pressure. 988 KXE, 541 horse up to a 17 yard bucket, four pass a uh, 770, five pass a 773, six pass a triple seven. Look at the height and the reach on this machine. And you can tell that you definitely would not have trouble loading a triple seven. Has payload control system as an option. Also has cat detect and a rear camera. If anybody came in behind him right now, he would be notified that there's somebody in his work area. He would stop, check out, make sure that it's safe to move on. And again, a very popular, uh, very popular attachment across our products today in both, in both the construction industry arena and in mining. Throttle lock, stick steer, ride control, all one of the features on this machine that make it such a hard and strong performer. So 988K, what's the XE mean? That's an electric drive loader. Same thing, diesel engine goes through that generator which generates the power. Power comes out, goes into our front and rear differential and puts it to the ground through the tires. Again, we've gotten rid of the transmission and the converter and this is a huge fuel savings for us. And I've spent time running that machine and it's amazing. It is, it is a horse. Quickly, off-highway truck, 775, 72 and a half ton capacity, five different body offerings on that truck, seven speeds, runs out at about 42 mile an hour on good haul road. Truck payload measurement systems and options, so when it's well maintained, I know exactly what the payload is in that truck within about a percent or two accuracy. Automatic retarder control, traction control um, system is also an option on that machine. So next one in the lineup. And the lineup is right here on the screen in front of me if you want to have a look at it. About the only one you're not going to see is the 986 and the 990. We're going to show you everything else. That's a brand new 992. So think back to the day of our first 992 and it was a Z-Bar linkage machine. Then we went away to what we called the mono boom. So we had a full cast mono boom and then we went into more of a fabricated mono boom, but it was still a mono boom. Then remember we came out with a 993 which then had that traditional Z-Bar linkage on it. We have gone back to that Z-Bar linkage, which actually we have found makes this machine much more aggressive in the dig. So this 992 again, back to the Z-Bar linkage, 15 to 32 yard buckets available. Increased material retention. So you look at the bucket fill factor on this and that comes from not only improved bucket design, but also the way that the front structure allows us to bring that bucket back just a little bit further to carry just a little bit more material in the bucket. 22 and a half to 30 ton capacity on this machine depending on whether it's a standard lift or a high lift and 48% more efficient. So again, we looked at the previous model, the technology that's become available today, we're able to get a lot more out of this machine. The more improvements we see like that, 
the less your cost is per ton to move this material. Increased breakout force and rim pull, which helps us to, again, achieve that large bucket fill factor. 10% lower maintenance costs, and again, a real nice match into this 777, 7-pass seven match into a 785, and this is a brand new cab design, so I'm going to encourage you when we're doing our walk-arounds today to get up in that machine and look at the cab, look at the room in there. This also has uh, ground floor service points on it, so the oiler doesn't need to go up on top to do any maintenance checks on his daily, daily inspections and his daily fueling and services. Wheel chocks are on the ground. Also has the optional operator access ladder. And most of our machines today come from the factory with fire suppression or fire suppression ready, which is a huge driver for us. Triple seven, rated at 100 ton, has three body options, a dual slope, an X body, and a gateless coal body. TPMS is an option, again, so well maintained. We know exactly what we're moving within a couple of percent. And then automatic retarder control, traction control system, and rack. And that rack tool is used to really measure how good our haul roads are. We can use that tool, take those downloads, to really understand exactly where our spikes, our stress points are at in our haul road, so we can go out and address that, fix them, achieve some higher speeds with our trucks while taking stress out of the frames and off of the tires. 993, really nothing new about that one. 18 yards, 30 tons swinging in a single, or in a standard lift able to swing about 27 and a half ton in a high lift. About two feet more reach and height when you go from a standard lift to a high lift. This machine has an impeller clutch on it. That impeller clutch means that as the operator is depressing the left pedal, he'll get all the way down 80% through that travel before it will start applying the brakes. Once he starts applying the brakes, the machine's going to slow down, but all that travel allows him to get this modulated travel in and out of that truck. So you can see how easy it is for him to lay that material in the truck. Same ground service features as you saw in the 992. Auto lube is standard. That machine also has terrain, and we're going to talk about terrain a little later this afternoon. Brand new 785 Next Gen. This is our new cab, and there's gonna be one on display tonight over dinner and drinks. Get in that cab, or when we go down on the floor, crawl up and look at this cab. Everything that you see up on that deck to the far left side is the after treatment. Uh, that's tier four, that's the tier four with the regen that's on that machine. That truck's rated at 153 ton, and if we put the 36R51 tire on it, we can get 157 ton in that truck. 550,000 pound max GVW, 10% longer engine life, 9% less fuel burn. And remember, fuel burn is engine life. So if we're able to save fuel and reduce the amount of fuel that we're burning, we're gonna get more engine life. 5% cycle time reduction just by the increased speed of this truck. And we also have a 6% higher TKPH. So when we put the larger tires on this truck, we can increase the payload but we can also increase our speed just a little bit. 34% more operator space, and again, that's that next-gen cab that is just such a comfortable feature on this truck. 30 new features and benefits on this truck. So again, I want you to pay attention to that when you have the opportunity to walk around this truck. Detect on that truck is standard. You can see it down on the lower bumper, actually right up above those wheel chocks, and Vision 360 is available on this truck. Again, so that operator can look and see exactly what's around and what's in his surroundings. So that is the start of our large mining trucks. Caterpillar has shipped over 40,000 large mining trucks worldwide. Over 4,000 of those trucks are 793s alone. We have seven different models ranging from 150 ton to 400 ton in both mechanical and electric drive. So let's bring in the largest loader in our lineup. This loader was brand new in 2016, actually at Mine Expo. There have been a lot of improvements on this machine in the last four to five years. So let's talk about some of them. 8% more material move per unit of fuel, 29% increase in rated payload. So what we were able to swing five years ago with our engineering 
tools that we have today, we're able to go in and determine how to get more out of some of the same structures on that machine. We can actually swing a little bit more if we're in rehandle or free flowing material. 25 to 57 yard bucket. The high lift also has an option of a 55 ton capacity when you're moving loose material. That machine also has that left pedal impeller clutch and then this machine also has a rim pull selector. So the operator off of his left hand can select on the dash to reduce his rim pull. If he's working on this ground after we watered and those tires start indexing or slipping a little bit, we don't want to damage those tires. So he will reduce the amount of rim pull that we're putting to the ground, but it won't have any impact on his hydraulic forces. His lift, his breakout force will continue to be the same. This also has the powered ground access stair option. And this machine has a 1500 gallon fuel tank, which is gonna allow us to run for that 24 hour shift. The 793 in front of us, this is next gen. This is a brand new truck. This is our next gen platform. This truck is also a command truck. Unfortunately, we can't let you get on this truck, but you are gonna be able to walk around it. 793s around the world have moved over six, or 70 billion tons of earth. There's 793s out there operating today which have well over 125 to 150,000 hours on them. Again, just like the 785, this next gen machine, 30 new features and benefits on this 793 next gen. And again, driving for that operator comfort. And those improvements to allow us to reduce the cost of every ton we move. 169 to 190 yard bodies on that 250 ton capacity at about 890,000 pound max GVW. We were at, at roughly 800 and, uh, 886, and then there's also an option to go with an extended payload on this machine as well, along with that next gen cab with improved ergonomics. So let's let these guys get out of here. Again, our largest loading tools today are our electric rope shovels, really designed for those ultra-class mines. So when we look at those machines, we have five different models, 7295, 7395, and you can see them on the screen. The heaviest one is the 7495 HF, which stands for high flotation. The 7495 HF weighs over about three million pounds. Payload range is across or 50 to 120 ton per pass and 25 to 82 yard capacity bucket sizes. The target trucks again are that 785 at 150 ton to 400 ton capacity, 797, 798 size truck. And the design match that we work for when we're looking at electric rope shovels is again that three to four pass match. Five different models of our wheel dozer today take advantage of the mobility. That's a very low cost support piece that if he's able to go in and improve your truck exchange time, turn your trucks out from under your digger faster, give that credit to the wheel dozer, you'll pay for it in a short amount of time. Where do we apply these? Coal stockpiles, greater compaction with the tires on this machine, greater compaction on a coal stockpile is gonna reduce the risk of fires. On a mining operation, I wanna come in and clean up right where the tires are gonna go. The price of that 793 brand new you are going to spend the same amount of money in the lifetime of that truck in tire related costs. You can see our lineup of wheel dozers. The 834, 44, and 54 is really where we're working today in mining. I'm a real fan of the 844 and the 854. Today, Caterpillar has a complete water truck offering for you. It's a Caterpillar truck. The ROPS has been certified today to work with a water tank. The tank on it is a Caterpillar tank, available on a 777, 785, 789. We also have what we call smart watering system on that. So the challenge isn't see, to see how quick we can get rid of 20,000 gallons of water, it's to see how we can put it down effectively. There's really two reasons to put water down, to control dust and or to get compaction. The system on our new truck is actually gonna look at your ground speed and it's gonna look at the requirements you have for water and it's gonna adjust the flow of your jets, whether you need the side sprays, the rear sprayed, if you need the gun turret, 
and put this water down efficiently. These guys always do a great job for us. And on behalf of Tanaha Hills, Marty and his team, I want to thank you for joining us today on this journey to technology. You saw where we started with our mining products, and it's amazing to see where we are today with only more to come. So thanks, have a good afternoon, good evening, safe travels.